Hi there, here is Baby Walker. Uh, we in Baby Walker Free Talks and Discoveries. Today I would like to tell you a little bit about a new concept on, in cosmology uh, with the concept that uh, give us a theory that we live in a simulation. We live in sim, uh, the simulation universe, uh, some kind of those terms are, are showing up uh, in the publication, uh, not only as the science fiction things, uh, but more and more uh, scientists are giving such uh, presumption uh, that uh, our universe could be a great simulation. And today we will talk how this could affect our lives and how those ideas come from and how it's related to the quantum physics and the last discoveries on this area. Um, because, um, you know, this concept is known from the many science fiction books or movies. Everybody knows uh, Matrix or the 13th floor. Mm, so, in a pop culture, does idea that maybe we are in a, we are in a, such a simulation which means that our reality is computed by some great supercomputer that calculates the location of any particle in the whole universe and of course this idea is really difficult to understand if we have the knowledge how big the universe is and how many data such a machine should um, have to compute to simulate the whole universe. But from the theoretical field, of course, this idea is quite possible. And there is some kind of scientific facts that could confirm this. And we talk about this today. The first fact is something which we know as a district, district time which means time is not continuous, um, but time could be digitalized, which means it could be divided into the singularity, very short pieces of time and very short pieces of uh, distance, called the distance of Planck uh, and the Planck time, which could give us uh, a conclusion that maybe our world is computed. This comes from the modern discoveries on the quantum physics. So on the very tiny distances near to the Planck distance, the time events on a quantum level could occur simultaneously, which means particle could be in two places in the same time. The theoretical um, researchers that um, investigate those problem, giving the solution that um, this phenomena is connected to the simulation supercomputer or super powerful things and this is the limit of the computation of the supercomputer and this is why we get this real resolution of the universe on the quantum level we get we have found this uh, resolution because many on very very tiny distances the time space is not actually working. Okay, the classical physics laws on this very tiny uh, spaces are no longer applicable. And this is one of the uh, reasons why we are talking about this concept, about this idea, about this theory, which is, of course, for many people actually crazy and Oh my god, this, this, it must be a science fiction. However, there are more different facts and, and very strange things which uh, could be an explanation uh, for this fact that we live in a sim. One of them is the phenomena that we know from the quantum physics. We know this as a quantum spin. In very short and simplified explanation, it means that um, the experiment with the particles using very uh, sophisticated lasers and mirrors uh, are giving us a phenomena that we call the quantum spin. 
uh, the quantum pair of two, two of two particles behaves in a way that generates some kind of bound, some kind of uh, spin, uh, which are revealed as the following things. If we look at the particle A and then we look at the particle B, the particle B will behave in a different way than if we don't look at the particle A, which indicates that there is some kind of magic spin, magic bound between those two particles. This is a subatomic level, of course, we are talking of the quantum physics. I'm using the simplifying particle to better explanation of this of this quarks because we are talking about quarks actually but the particle is uh, simplifying of the thing okay so when observing the particle a we actually change the property of the particle b and this is absolutely fantastic thing but the experiment that have been done proved that there is that this uh, phenomena is not local it's not working in a tiny space. We call it a non-locality on the quantum level. And the experiment that has been performed basically do some such thing that uh, they observe particle A and they send particle B to distant location, even a few kilometers, uh, which from the particle level is an absolutely great distance. So they uh, send this particle using these lasers to another lab and they observed it and the phenomena is that those two particles are magically connected on this great distance for the particle and level the few kilometers is a really really great distance so it means that this quantum spin phenomena is actually a proof that there's some kind of unknown force some kind of unknown uh, bound is working here and the only explanation for this is that there is uh, something above the dimensions the uh, computer the, the creation we don't know actually what but there is a process that controls this spin on very very tiny tiny uh, levels on the quantum level and many experiments has been done to uh, confirm this this experiment this experiment uh, you can find about this is called is called the electron diffraction and it refers to the wave nature of the electrons but uh, the scientist from Israel also has done this experiment on the photons so of the particle that have no uh, its own mass and also very interesting thing connected with this uh, quantum spin has been done of course old quantum physics n is an actually pretty new kind of uh, science it has no uh, more than a hundred years from the Heisenberg and Bohr all this started from the Heisenberg and Bohr However, this new observation, these new things actually give us a uh, conclusion that our reality is illusoric. It's actually magical. It means that it is not determined in the way that we know from the Newton's physics. So, uh, if we really live in a simulation, there is a lot of new questions and a lot of new field to study the first question is if we are able to prove this theory if we are able to prove that we live in sim of course those supercomputer that we called so this, this thing that controls this universe and creates those simulation must be very very powerful and much more powerful that we could even imagine it so the conclusion is that there is one that there is a lot of new questions a lot of new uh, fields to study and in the next part of this topic we will be examining we will be discussing those things so i warmly uh, invite you to the next part and also 
If you like, please give a comment, start discussion. Uh, I will answer all these comments and also refer to those comments in my next video. It was BB Walker Free Talks Discoveries. Thank you and see you later.